Hi, welcome to the Magic of Math, where we master math one video at a time. Today, my lesson is on solving multi-step inequalities. Our objective today is just that, we will solve multi-step inequalities. But here's what I would like you thinking about as I proceed through the lesson today. How can you use what you already know about solving equations and inequalities to solve multi-step inequalities? So we're going to draw on your prior learning. There are four steps to solving multi-step inequalities. Step one, if necessary, clear parentheses by performing the distributive property. Step two, circle the variable term, and if necessary, add or subtract a value from both sides of the inequality to isolate the variable term reminding you that steps one and two may or may not be necessary. Step three, circle the variable if all that's on the left or the right of the inequality symbol is the variable term, circle the variable. Then, if necessary, multiply or divide a value from both sides of the inequality so the variable has a coefficient of one. So this is our end goal. We want to know what the variable is less than, greater than or less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to. So the variable needs to have a coefficient of one. And step four, you're going to graph your solution. Noting that this property or these steps apply to all the inequality symbols, less than, greater than, less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to. So let's go ahead and dig in and solve a multi-step inequality. So this is called multi-step because it's going to take two steps to find the solution set. So the first thing I want to do is, there are no parentheses, so I don't need to distribute, but I'm going to isolate this variable term first. So identifying that my variable term 6x is being subtracted by 3. So I need to create a zero pair here so that I'm left with just 6x on the left. So to do that, the inverse of subtract 3 is to add 3 to each side. So this is zero pair. I'm left with 6x greater than or equal to, and 9 plus 3 is 12. Now I need to get x all by itself. I'm going to isolate x. I want a coefficient of 1. So the inverse of multiply by 6 is to divide by 6. What I do to one side of the inequality I must do to the other to keep the properties of equality in check. 6 divided by 6 is 1, leaving me x. Greater than or equal to 12 divided by 6 is 2. We are ready to graph. So I need my number line. I'm going to put my value of 2 on my number line. I need a closed circle because it can be equal to, and it's going to be everything shaded to the right of 2 and including 2. Let's try this one together. Again, there's no parentheses, so I don't need to distribute, so I'm going to identify my variable term. Now I identify that it's being added by 3, so I need to create that zero pair. The inverse of add 3 is to subtract 3 from each side. When I do that, I have my variable term bring down my inequality symbol, and 7 subtract 3 is 4. Now I identify what is happening to the variable. The variable is being divided by negative 4. The inverse of divide by negative 4 is to multiply by negative 4. What I do to the left, I must also do to the right. Now I am multiplying both sides by a negative value. Because I am multiplying both sides by a negative value, I have to remember my rule and reverse the symbol. So it's going to go from greater than to less than. So now I'm ready to simplify. Negative 4 divided by negative 4 is 1, leaving me x. I already have my symbol, and 4 times negative 4 is negative 16. There's my solution. Now we need to graph. I'm going to get my number line. I'm going to put my value negative 16 on my number line. I need an open circle because it's not equal to, and it's going to be everything shaded to the left. Now it's your turn. 
I would like you to pause the video now, solve, don't forget to graph, and come back when you're done to check your work. Welcome back. So we're going to identify our variable term. Don't forget, whatever operation comes in front of a term identifies whether it's positive or negative. This is negative 4x. This is positive 3. So I need to create a zero pair here. This is positive 3, so I need to subtract 3 from each side to create my zero pair. So bring down the negative 4x, bring down the less than or equal to, and 27 subtract 3 is 24. Now, my variable x, I want to create a coefficient of 1. So the inverse of multiply by negative 4 is to divide both sides by negative 4. I'm dividing by a negative value, so I must make a plan and reverse my inequality symbol. Now I'm ready to simplify. Negative 4 divided by negative 4 is 1, giving me just x, or 1x. 24 divided by negative 4 is negative 6. Let's graph our solution set. Here's my number line. My value, negative 6 on my number line. I need a closed circle because it can be equal to. And everything shaded to the right. All right, your turn again. Please pause the video now, solve, graph your solution, and come back to check your work. Welcome back. Let's go ahead and identify our variable term. And then it's being added by 13. We're going to create our zero pair by doing the inverse and subtract 13 from each side. This is zero, leaving me 8x less than or equal to, and negative 3 and negative 13 are negative 16. Now I look to see what's happening to x. x is being multiplied by 8. The inverse of multiply by 8 is to divide each side by 8. So 8 divided by 8 is 1, leaving me x less than or equal to, and negative 16 divided by 8 is negative 2. We're going to graph our solution. We want negative 2 on our number line. We're going to use a closed circle because it can be equal to, and we're going to shade to the left. All right, here's one that we have to distribute first. So we're going to 3 times x and 3 times 4, which is 3x plus 12. Now we're ready to go into step 2. We identify our variable term. It's being added by 12, and we want to create our zero pair, so we're going to subtract 12 from each side, leaving me, this is 0, 3x greater than negative 3. 9 subtract 12 is negative 3. Identify what's happening to the variable. It's being multiplied by 3. The inverse of multiply by 3 is to divide by 3. What I do to one side, I must do to the other. 3 divided by 3 is 1, leaving me x greater than negative 1. Our solution on our number line, let's graph our solution set. We need a negative 1 on our number line. We want an open circle because it is not equal to, and it's going to be shaded to the right. Now it's your turn. I would like you to pause the video now, solve, and graph your solution. Welcome back. So we're going to distribute first 7 times x and 7 times negative 2. So that gives us 7x subtract 14 less than or equal to negative 21. We're identifying what's happening to our variable term, and it's being subtracted by 14. To create my zero pair here, I'm going to add 14 to each side. So this gives us 7x less than or equal to and negative 21 plus 14 is negative 7. Now, here's x being multiplied by 7. The inverse would be to divide both sides by 7. 7 divided by 7 is 1, giving me x less than or equal to, and negative 7 divided by 7 is negative 1. Let's graph our solution set. We're going to plot negative 1 on our number line. We need a closed circle because it can be less than or equal to, 
and we're going to shade everything to the left. And there you have it. That is how you solve multi-step inequalities in four simple steps. I thank you for joining me today at The Magic of Math, where we continue to master math one video at a time. I hope you'll come back soon and subscribe to my channel. Have a great day.